defensively and your midfield has been tremendous. Fabian Espinola has been putting the ball in the back of the net. What's been working for you guys lately that has all uh, clicked for you guys? Well, I, I don't know. What's been working is that uh, we've been bringing home the results. Uh, I don't say I can't say we've been playing beautiful soccer, but we've been uh, very cynical, and uh, you know we've had a few uh, where we're, we're, we're not under undergoing. Uh, we're not taking many goals, so that's positive too, right? We're we're keeping clean sheets, and uh, yeah, we're we're a connected team, and uh, we're a little bit of catenacho every once in a while. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're up there with, uh, you know, I don't think anybody's ever really uh, really dominated us, and uh, I don't think anybody dominates anybody in this league, and uh, why not? So, uh, I mean, why can't we be up there with, uh, with, the, with, uh, with the best of them, right? And so safe to say it is a veteran-laden team, this D.C. United team. It's got a few youngsters on this team, but there's not really much you can really, I would say, to a team like this in the locker room when you're down a couple goals or in training because... Uh, you know, all these guys have heard it before, Enzo. They're veterans. Davey Arnault, uh, you know, Johnson. I could go on and on. I mean, Bobby Boswell. So how do you go about making these guys understand that things need to change in certain areas so you guys can get the results? Is it looking at video of previous games and pointing out things? Well, of course, of course. Uh, these guys, these are all players that have experience. Therefore, yeah, you sure. We do We do uh, cut up video, of course, like uh, like everybody. But, uh, yeah, they're an, ex they're an experienced team, but the, the most important thing is that uh, uh, we're, um, we're, uh, we're getting the results because everybody's, uh, everybody's uh, uh, interested in the same thing, and that is winning games. Jeff Park, to me, has been an outstanding a guy for you all season long, Enzo. Jeff Park, to me, has been a guy that you can rely upon. He's solid. He's not a, a guy that's going to do a lot of uh, uh, fancy and extra stuff. He's just going to get the job done. Yeah, he's. Uh, no, I was, uh, I was finishing off before. It's, uh, it's just a, a question of, uh, of uh, players uh, that have uh, synced in all together. You know, seven, seven or eight of these players are, are new. But uh, uh, we've, uh, we're, we're on the same page. When we're on the field, we're on the same page. And uh, uh, it seems to bring us, uh, it's, up until now, it's brought us good results. That's uh, there's no, and, and, and then again, we, we, we have no prima donnas. And we have no, uh, nobody uh, you know, wanting to, uh, to uh, be above everybody else. Uh, there's a ball, you know, bottle, uh, bottle water carriers. And uh, there's, a, there's a few players that... That uh, that give us something extra on the te te technical uh, technical aspect, uh, and uh, we have you know some players that put a, put the ball in the in the back of the net like Espindola. Eddie Johnson has been a little less lucky. He's had some some chances, but he hasn't been able to put them away. But for now, but uh, I'm sure that when he does start, he, he's not going to stop. Uh, he's a he's a tremendous player, and he's been working for the team up until now, and uh, it's been paying off. Uh, so, uh, you know, let's hope we continue and uh, stay consistent uh, up until the playoffs because that's, uh, I think that's the key, being stay consistent. We're going to have uh, the use, you know, we're going to need all the players we have on the roster. Up until now, we've uh, used, let's say, maybe a limited amount of those, but now we're coming down to, uh, to uh, having to support a lot of games and uh, we're going to need everybody and all those people there that haven't been, uh, you know, haven't had the opportunity to, to get on the field are going to start doing it really soon. So, uh, and we know they're going to be ready. Enzo, New England Revolution right now are red hot. They are playing some outstanding football. Uh, this is a team that I'm pretty sure you and your coaches have watched and seen what they have been doing well. Montreal has struggled. TFC has been up and down. To me, watching New England Revolution is a team that I'm pretty sure you guys have on your radar that are, are going to give you a challenge, uh, not only now, but possibly in the playoffs. Yeah, we, we, uh, we played them a couple of weeks ago there at their home. Um, uh, they, they got some, uh, some uh, positive, a lot of positives about them. They got an excellent midfield. I'd say they're one of the, probably one of the best midfields in the league. And then uh, you know they found that guy up front there, that uh, that uh, young player uh, Mullins, uh, that uh, that brought uh, uh, brought something different uh, to their to their team ever since his arrival. But they're they're vulnerable like everybody else somewhere. You know, and it, it, let's say the defense is uh, it, it could use uh, some work. And 
but they're not unbeatable, you know. Uh, and so let's talk about yourself personally, making the uh, the voyage from uh, Italy and making your trek over here to North America. It's a different lifestyle altogether. I'm pretty sure you found out with the travel in this league early on, uh, with the day-to-day duties, uh, with all sorts of different things. What has been the hardest adjustment for you personally uh, early on in this MLS season, on and off the field? Uh well, let's say the adjustment, uh, sure, uh, there has uh, been some adjustment, a tactical adjustment, technical, uh, and as you said, you know, there, there's, uh, there's different distances here uh, than, uh, than there are in Europe, especially Italy, where, you know, you got every, every, every game uh, at the end of the game on Sunday night, you're, you're, you're in a couple of hours, you're home, you know. And here it's not so. You got to maybe travel. You got a whole day of traveling here to get back or get to the get to the venue, and uh, that's a, that's a factor. Uh, I miss a bit of the Italian uh, the Italian food. I miss my girlfriend. I uh, Italy is a beautiful country, and, uh, but uh, I'm taking the best of of, of what uh, what I got here. I'm learning a lot. I'm, uh, I've seen this uh, this league is. Uh, it's 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 uh, it's got some work to do, but it's advancing, and that's important. Uh, it's going to be attractive for for more and more players coming from abroad as we go on. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to take the what you know everything. There's a lot of positives here as well. Let's talk about a positive that you have on your team that if this kid continues to develop and gets the time, I think Canada can smile. I'm looking at Kyle Porter, and he comes from the NASL. He's now on DC United the last year and a bit. And to me, this is a kid that could really be groomed into a a real good player for the Canadian men's national team down the road. Uh, Yeah, Kyle's been working. He hasn't had a lot of opportunities to to uh, to uh, to show himself because uh, there's uh, there's other people in front of him that are uh, that are playing now. But uh, uh, for sure, uh, very soon he's going to get get his chance. And uh, when he when he's uh, when he goes with the um, with our uh, farm team, uh, the Richmond uh, the, the the team in Richmond, he does very well. He scores goals. He brings victories. So you know he's. Uh, He's, he's getting his 90 minutes in uh, anyway. But we're going to, for sure, we're going to need him here. I think he's a good prospect, and uh, he's getting better every day. And so let's talk about early on some of the players that have really uh, caught your eye uh, from some of the opposition. You've gotten a chance to see uh, quite a bit of the teams early on. Who's really caught your eye that you believe uh, can really do some damage throughout the season for their team? Well, listen. I don't really like talking about other uh, other teams' players uh, very much. Uh, of course, I can uh, you know if I have to name a, name one, I could name uh, you know I, I love the way uh, Huguain plays. Uh, uh, he's a player that uh, that um, uh, has something more than everybody else. Uh, he's a winner, uh, and this me uh, this this league needs players like that. I hope we get more in the future. Um, yeah, uh, and sure, there's a lot of other players. There's players here, you know. I mean, uh, I, I don't want to leave anybody out, but we have a, a lot of excellent players here as well. And so you haven't made the trek yet to the Pacific Northwest. I'm pretty sure that you guys will be out there to Vancouver, Portland, and Seattle. And when you do get out there, I think it's safe to say that you can really say that this is the atmosphere that was back home in Italy because they pack them in. They're vibrant, they're loud, and they really enjoy their teams. How nice is it going to be to make your way out there to really get a taste of what the rest of MLS is and not just the Eastern uh, time zone? Yeah, a nice place. You know, West is, uh, is nice. The only thing is we, went, we already went to uh, Portland. We lost in the uh, uh, 95th minute, I think, and that was a burner. Uh, no, it's great. Uh, those teams are great teams. The only problem they have is that they play on turf. <laughs> Yeah. So all three of them. So uh, you know, you don't look forward to that very much. In spite, okay, the fans uh, help. You know, they got big fan bases, and that's good. But uh, the turf uh, is, um, is 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 a um, it's a challenge, Enzo. And when you go to Seattle and Vancouver, negative. it's negative. And when you go to Seattle and Vancouver, Enzo, there's turf there as well. And they say that Vancouver is the worst in the league, along with Seattle. How do you, as a coach? and your coaches uh, help the players to get ready when you've got to play a team like Portland, Seattle, on Vancouver on that facility where you guys train on all grass and play your home games on pure grass. The bounce of the ball is different, Enzo. 
Well, yeah, if, if something changes, it's not that you change your game because of that. Of course, if it's raining and, uh, you know, you're on the turf and it's going to, you know, get away from you the ball, you always try to recommend your players not to screw around too much with it in the box, in your own box. And, uh, you know, if you're not sure, uh, you just make it knock it up, right, instead of trying to, trying to hold balls uh, uh, when, the, when, the, when the terrain is not, uh, uh, is not favorable to you. But, uh yeah, we, you, you don't change your game plan too much. Uh, it's always a, a rectangular field, the same size as anything else. So of course, the, uh, it's, 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 it's hard on the legs, it's hard on the joints, but uh, that's the way it is, and we got to, you know, get on with it. Enzo, you've come from Europe where, again, it's a really technically, tactically type of game. You come here to MLS, I'm sure that you've seen early on, it's a physical brand of game. It's a more of a run and gun style. You might get a couple teams that are really wanting to control the pace and, and really spread the ball around. Have you noticed that early on here in, in your time in MLS that it really is a physical game and it is more of a run and gun game? Uh, no, I, don't, I can't really say that. I agree with that. Uh, it's not really a run and gun game. I don't, uh, I, I, it's not so. It's... Um, it's open. It's more open. Maybe the defenses, uh, the defenses uh, give you more space. There's more space up front for, for teams attacking. Uh, there's less of an, uh, an eye on, on defense. I've seen in most of the teams, you know, they're, they're, even their, their, their money allocation, things will go, go, go always to players that, that, uh, that either are scorers or that, uh, that are playmakers. And there's a, uh, uh, let's say they're they're um, snobbing a bit the the defensive part, not because uh, because uh, they you know it's just a uh, it's just the fact is that people are spending money to buy more more uh, in, let's say exciting players and the exciting players are the ones that play uh, uh, up front right or just behind the the, the midfield or a low uh, playmaker you know uh, like. Um, uh, uh, let's say Pierre. Okay, people spend money there, and then on defense, so there's not much. Uh, there's not much care. Uh, I um, I think that this is something that the that league's gonna gonna. Of course, it's gonna get better, uh, and people will start looking at uh, at ways to uh, to improve their uh, their structure on defense. Enzo, to me, watching Bill Hammett, not only this season, but uh, the year before, this is a young man uh, on the rise in his position. To me, early on, when Jurgen Klinsmann, a year and a half ago, was deciding on that third keeper, I really thought that Bill had a real a solid opportunity to crack that lineup for Team USA. He didn't, but to me, this guy has made some real highlight reel saves this season already, and I think the future is bright for this young man. Talk about him. Yeah, Bill. Uh, Bill's a solid. He's uh, he's uh, he's he's very mature for his age. Uh, he's a professional. Trains hard. Plays hard. Uh, and he's got a lot of margin. You know, a lot of uh, margin. Be careful. He just passed in front of me now. I just, uh, yeah, we're here at, uh, at the stadium watching uh, watching Spain uh, practice here at our our stadium. Sorry about that. And uh, yeah, he's a, he's a tremendous uh, goalkeeper, and he's got so much room to, to improve. Uh, and he's uh, kept us in a lot of games, and uh, I, I'm I'm very happy when we get uh, a clean sheet uh, because it's, it's also thanks to him, right? Absolutely, Enzo. A couple other questions, and then we'll let you go. We really appreciate your time. Chris Rolfe, to me, has been a solid addition to your club. We had him on our show last year uh, when he was with the Chicago Fire, and you could see that he needed a change of atmosphere, and you could see that this year with your club, he has really, really uh, had a tremendous start. Talk about Chris Rolfe. By the way, Enzo, I don't know if you know this, but Chris Rolfe against the Columbus crew has basically had them for lunch and scored some big goals in his career. Yeah, Rolfe uh, is, a, is a tremendous player. He's uh, he's uh, he's intelligent. He's technical. Uh, he's smart. Uh, he's cool with the ball. Uh, he knows what to do when he doesn't have it. He's just uh, an easy uh, an easy player to coach because he's uh, he just does everything so well. And uh, he was, he's been a great addition uh, to this team. And uh, I hope he stays healthy. And uh, and. Um, it's great to have him here. He's one of the most talented players I've seen up until now.